Okay, folks. Um, so sorry about what confusion might have existed with regard to the due date of the homework. So, um, so I thought it was all good, and then I got one email saying it seems to be due today, right? So I was at an airport, so I checked it out, and I saw, yes, the website where it was, the homework was posted did indeed. And I say, well, the good thing is I wouldn't make such a stupid mistake, right? So then I went and looked at my um, schedule. It's a little bit ambivalent in the sense that um, you've got two April 7ths. But other than that, I thought it was pretty clear, OK? Um, but I sent you an email last night, I'm hoping everybody got it, that um, the, the homework is actually due tomorrow, right? And today, uh, the first part of the class is going to be go going over the MATLAB stuff you need to do the homework. That was the whole idea. You might remember I talked about that last week. OK. That's number one. Um, number two, you will notice that there is an exam. This exam is on Thursday, right? This exam is going to be just like the first exam. Well, it's, it's going to be different, but it's going to be the same structure. Open book, open note. I decided not to make it cumulative. So it's just, yay. OK, so it's just going to be on linear algebra, <coughs> you know, linear algebraic systems and linear algebra and nonlinear algebraic systems like we've been talking about the last week, OK? So I'll get back to stats on the final exam, I'm sure, but it didn't seem to, didn't seem to fit in with a, with a midterm like this. All right? Now, then I always have a tradition of posting a practice exam. And so then after I got back in town this morning, I started looking for a practice exam. And there's actually none available in the sense that um, all the old exams that I have have um, two things that you can't do. So, I used to do linear algebra and differential equations, and I would do the first exam right after I did linear differential equations. So the, the exam is often have, have examples that, that are mainly about solving linear differential equations using like eigenvalues and eigenvectors to do it. The second thing they always have is a modeling question that required knowledge of kinetics and reaction engineering. So the problem is I can give you a practice exam where like 20% is applicable to what you need to know, and the other 80% will just be totally perplexing as to what I want. <laughs> and if I thought it was the other ratio, I could just tell you what 20% not to do. But if I gave you a 9, I'd have to tell you what 80% not to do. And that doesn't seem very useful. I'll, I'll continue to look and see if I can try to put something together. Um, but if I can't, then the key thing is to study your homeworks and stuff. And by the way, I don't know, Adina, the TA, seems to be a little bit angry. I'm not sure. <laughs> not sure why she's so angry. <laughs> she, that note she, you know, there's a way to communicate to people, right? It's something like, hey, guys, um, I realize you're busy, but it'd be great if you got came, you know, a little better prepared so I could be more useful in helping you. But like, I read that note, I was like, not sure that's going to be very effective, you know. But, um, and it suffices to say, if I think you've acted inappropriately, you're probably way out of the ballpark. Okay. So I, I'm sure she doesn't mean anything by it, you know. So don't, I'm sure most of you aren't taking it personally, and maybe in many ways don't care, so. Um, but, uh, so if you, d but she did give you some ideas if you read beyond the first part, and she did give you some ideas about what you might do to study, and those are pretty accurate. And I'll again see if I can do something with, um, see if I can do something with regard to putting up some problems, maybe by combining some old tests or something like that, okay? I'll work on that this afternoon. All right. So. You might recall um, I rearranged the schedule um, such that we could cover this topic here. And the, the motivation here was you need to do this to do your homework. And so the homework you have has two parts. The first part, I think that's the way it's organized, was a part on linear algebra, you know, linear algebraic systems. And you should have been able to do that if you wanted to already. That should have been no problem. The second part you maybe could have done on your own, but I think it might be a lot easier after this lecture. So that's why I moved it. Um, so we've talked about um, problems that look like this. We, we had two lectures on how to solve uh, either a single nonlinear differential equation in a single unknown or a set of nonlinear equations in a, um, with a set of unknowns, system of equations. And, you know, we talked about um, the uh, fixed point method, Newton's method, secant method, and we focused a lot on fixed point and Newton's method. And um, so those are nice to understand how algorithms work. Hopefully you learn that sometimes these algorithms will work, sometimes they'll convert, sometimes they won't. You have to guess the answer. 
Sometimes if you guess the bad answer, they'll diverge. You might get a different answer depending on the guess. Okay, that's why we went through all that stuff. So now we obviously, if you want to solve a problem like this that's non-trivial, you probably want to use something like MATLAB to do it. So that's what I'm going to tell you today. Someone asked me, what is going to be on the exam? This will be the last material on the exam, but if, you know, you've seen what I'm going to ask you if I ask you something about MATLAB. What's the command to do X? It's like a single line, okay? No, I'm not going to ask you to write a bunch of code or anything like that, okay? So you remember, uh, like on the last exam, I'd say if you wanted to, I'm trying to think of what, if you wanted to calculate the correlation coefficient, or I forget exactly what questions I asked, but there was a single MATLAB command. All you had to do is go look, to be honest, all you had to do is go look in your notes on this topic I was talking about and find the command <laughs> and basically substitute in the variables of interest to you. So, um, well, in principle, this is the last topic on the exam. It's not going to be, obviously, a major topic, but it's important to learn for us to be able to be functional in MATLAB to solve real problems. I, I hope to spend about the first, let's say, 45 minutes on this. Um, depending on how long it takes. This will be a little more involved than some of the other ones where you get out way early and everyone celebrates. Um, and then, uh, depending on when I start, I'll get so far in the next lecture, but the lecture I start today, <clears throat> you know, let's say um, 145 won't be on the exam because it's on writing differential equation models, so don't, you don't need to worry about that for the exam. All right. Oh, so the outline here. So there's two functions in MATLAB to solve differential equations. <laughs> I, flew, I got in last night from the airport at 1 o'clock, so I'm not very astute right now. Um, my cogent quotient is quite low. Okay. So I'm gonna, let me see if I can get it together. So we're talking about solving nonlinear algebraic equations. There's two functions in MATLAB to do it. Um, the first MATLA uh, MATLAB function is called F0, and it's going to solve a single nonlinear equation in a single unknown. And that function's available in MATLAB. So if you just get MATLAB with none of the toolboxes, you're going to have the function F0. Um, the thing you need to solve systems of differential equations, so you know, like three equations and three unknowns or whatever, you need to use a function called F-solve. Okay. F-solve is only available in something called the optimization toolbox. If you got the student edition, you have it. If you got it somewhere else, you know, it's not my problem. Um, you may not have it, but that's, I'm just warning you. So if you, if you, as you go through this exercise, that, or these exercises I'm going to show you, if you start getting an error when you run F-solve, like it says F-solve, what's that? That means you may not have the toolbox you need to use F-solve. So I'll introduce these two functions to solve these problems. What the? <laughs> Seem to have lost my pointer. I'm so, I would even go so far as to say I'm sad. Um, Actually, I'm more angry than anything else, but I wonder where it, <laughs> whatever. Okay, so, so F0 is a function. You can find the root. This the, I just copied this out of MATLAB. It finds the root of a continuous function of one variable, it says. So that means it's going to assume the function F here is a continuous function, which is pretty reasonable. We only like, we only work with continuous functions typically. Um, and it's going to find the root, in other words, the x's that satisfy this equation. Those are called the roots, okay? And this is how you use it. So at this point, we're going to limit our considerations to a single function and a single unknown, okay? So this is the syntax. This is the way MATLAB wants you to use this function F0. So the first thing is, you see this little thing in quotes here? Um, it's something called whatever you want to call it. I called it fun for function but for me it's fun, all right? This is something you have to write. It's an M file. You know, we talked about writing M files. I'll show you how to write it. But it's something you have to write in order to evaluate the right-hand side of the equation, or this, this, call it the whatever you want, left-hand side here. Right, if you want MATLAB to solve a set, or let's say a single um, nonlinear equation and a single unknown, you have to tell it what the equation is, right? And so what you need to do is write a function and what MATLAB's going to do is give you a value of x, and you need to evaluate the function f. That's what the function f of our fun does, okay? Um, and then you have to guess the answer, right? So all these algorithms require you guess the answer to begin with. So x0 is just your guess. All right, and I already said what fun is. It's something you have to write. It's an m file, so it's going to be called, have a .m extension, and it evaluates the function f, given the value of x. Um, and x naught is an initial guess of um, what the actual answer is, okay? 
So just, I don't want to get into the details of the algorithm. So when we talk about algorithms for everything we do, we talk about the most rudimentary algorithms that are the good for learning the methods. They're not actually not always the best algorithms for, for practice. So if you're solving real complex problems, usually there's more complex algorithms than we have time to cover. So this particular algorithm uses a combination of, of three different methods, and only one of this which really, really talked about the secant method, right? Secant method was basically the, the Newton method, where you approximated the derivative instead of computed it analytically. And then there's a couple other methods called bisection and inverse quadratic. And I'd have to look and see exactly how it uses them. Often it'll look at your problem and decide which of these methods it wants to use, or sometimes it'll progress partway through the problem and switch between different methods, okay? But you understand, to write a program like this is challenging because it has to work for any, any function you provide, right? And even though we know these methods diverge, um, or can diverge, you would rather not write a function that off, you would rather not write a piece of code that often diverged. So it, there's a lot of work that goes in this. By people that do this kind of work, you know, like numerical analysts, and people that do computational work to come up with the methods. So. Let's just say it, it's a, a more advanced method than we talked about, but it's, it's you know, iterative method, same kind of thing. All right. So here's our, one of our favorite problems, or at least one of my favorite problems, the redlick Kwong equation, right? We've been through this several times. We did it, I think, um, in the last two lectures, we solved this problem three times or tried with each of the methods we talked about. So what we want to do here is we want to specify the pressure and the volume, sorry, the pressure and the temperature, and we want to calculate the volume, okay? Um, we assume we know the gas constant, we know the two, the A and B, which depend on the gas you're dealing with. And so you take the redlick Kwong equation, you always have to write it as F of X equals zero, right? So for this problem, you want to write it as F of V equals zero, because the unknown is V volume, right? So that just means you can do it either way you want. You can move pressure on the right-hand side, or you can move everything on the right-hand side to the left-hand side. But I moved. I did the latter, right? I took the two terms on the left, right-hand side and moved them over to the left, so I got something equal zero. You have to do that, okay? If you were to try to solve this problem and just evaluate the right-hand side without the P there, you, won't, you will not get the right answer, okay? All right, and the re our motivation here was this is kind of a nasty function in V, right? And if, I think if we, we talked about it before. If you were trying to, you could multiply this whole thing out. I think you'd find it's a cubic in V. And so it'd be, I guess, beyond our normal capabilities of easily solving. So this is a nice, simple example, but good one for MATLAB. Okay, first thing you have to do is you have to write a function, okay? So I already wrote such a function. And Get rid of all this. And I, with no disrespect to Mr. Kwong, I called this Redlick, okay? Um, just got lazy and didn't feel like including a longer name. So if you look at the, or it could be Mrs. Kwong, I don't really know. All right, so if you look at the function here, well, you have, this is the nomenclature or syntax you have to use, okay? It has to say function. Okay, it has to say f equals, and then it has to have the name of whatever you want to call your function. I called it redlick, call it whatever you want. Then it has to have parentheses x. So the only freedom in that first command is to change the name to whatever you want, call it Kwong if you want, right? And so then what I've done is I've specified the temperature, the pressure, the gas constant, and the, the constants a and b in the units are the same constants and same conditions I used in the lecture notes. So you could go back and look at the units. They're all system, consistent set of units. I think they're actually English units, but I don't remember, like bar, and, but I don't remember, to be honest with you. But they're a consistent set of units. Um, and then, so the idea here is that what MATLAB wants me to do, it's going to give me the value x, and then it wants me to evaluate the function f, okay? Because I prefer to write my function in terms of v instead of x, I just say let v equal x. Just make <laughs> things convenient, okay? And then I proceed to write the function on the previous page in, using MATLAB, right? So that's just the function I have on the previous page. I assume at this point everyone, you know, 
knows that that's multiplication in MATLAB and that's division and that's square root in MATLAB and so on and so forth. Okay? So that evaluates the function. <coughs> and then I, re then it, so the way this works is um, MATLAB may call this function many times, hundreds or even thousands of times, but every time it calls it, all it's asking me to do is please give me the value of your function f for the value of x I give you. Okay, and that's all you have to do. The most common mistake when people, things don't work and you, you know, you try to use this, it'll be something you screwed up in here, most likely this. Okay? If you don't return an f here, because the way the function works, it says, I give you x and you promise to give me back a value of f. If you don't return a value of f, you'll get an error as well. All right? So that's a pretty simple function, I think. Doesn't get much easier. And that function is shown here in the, in the notes, the exact same, exact same thing. All right? All right. So here's how we use redlick, our function. So I guess I'll just show you this. So, first of all, you have to guess what you think the answer is, right? It's helpful to know kind of what the answer is, like order of magnitude. Like, is it 0 0.1, 1, 10, 100, minus 1,000, something like this? So I guess this because I already know the answer, luckily for me. And then I issue this command. Whoops. Oh, sorry. It's supposed to be z O, not, ah, not zero. Okay. So then I issue this command here. So this just says, um, please use the function f0. I've provided something called redlick.m. It needs to be in those little quotes like that. If you don't put the quotes, you'll get an error. Okay? And then I've given you an initial guess, v0. I got the error before because I accidentally called my guess v0, and this is v0. You know, they're not, you know, I didn't have a value of v0. <laughs> I had a typo there. And then please give me the back value back as v. So if you hit this thing, you see it's a really simple problem. You get the answer really quickly. And the answer, this is the same answer we got in the notes. So it's, it's the right answer, all right? Um, so let's say you try this one. I think that also will work fine. Yep. Did I find one that screwed it up? It's always fine to fun, fun to find a case that screws things up. Yay. Okay. All right. So you might imagine with these kind of methods, if the answer is like 0.2 and you guess 0.1, you're pretty close. It should work. One's not that far away. But, you know, let's say you guess 10. Then you get this thing. All right? This is what you don't like in MATLAB, right? It says, it says exiting F0. That's not good. Words like exit and abort are not things you want to see. Aborting search for an interval containing a sign change because no sign change is detected during the search. What does that mean? It means it, 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 it failed, okay? It said function may not have a root. So in other words, it, it's not able, what, it, what it's looking for in this method, you can tell by this, is it's looking to find an interval where the sign of f changes from plus to minus, right? Because if you find one value of x where it's plus, right? So here's a little interval of x, let's say, here. And if you find that down here it's negative and up here it's plus, you know there's a zero in between if the function's continuous. There might be more than one zero, but there's got to be at least one. And it's saying, I can't find anything like this. I'm giving up. Okay. And then it gives you back a V called some um, thing called NAN. That means not a number. <laughs> that, this means failure. So what you have to do is in MATLAB, you have to interpret the error messages according to what you know about the method. Um, as to whether, it, sometimes the, the message it gives you is to be completely ignored. Sometimes the message is not to be ignored, it's concerning, but it's maybe not fatal. This is a fatal error, it just says, I couldn't, I couldn't solve your problem. And the problem here is 10's too far away. So, you know, the problem with this kind of approach is unavoidable. It's like, let's just say this was your first guess. You're like, uh-oh. <laughs> right? So, if this was my very first guess, I would try some other initial guesses because there are kind of two possibilities here. One is that, well, we're going to have an underlying assumption there exists an answer. So we're hoping that's not the problem. So the problem is either you made a bad guess or you screwed up that file, right? You made an error in that redlick thing. So 
the, you know, if you get a problem like this, the first thing you'd be tempted to do is, is try another guess and hope it will work. Somewhere in here you'll get close enough, since we know the answer, right? Whoops, that's not close enough. <laughs> Apparently so. I'm really getting angry. No, I'm not. Yay. Okay, that's still, you know, you can be like a factor of 10 too great, but you can't be a factor too much more than that. So, it's just the nature of the beast, right? The, the solution depends on the guess. If you guess too far away, it doesn't work. You don't know how too far away is, and you don't know where the answer is. <laughs> so, play around with it like this. All right. So that's, that's the function to solve a, sing, a single uh, equation and a single unknown. So if you want to solve a system of equations, more than one function, more than one unknown, you need to use the function f solve. And this is available, like I said, as part of the optimization toolbox. Okay. And if you got the student version by legitimate means, then you will have this toolbox. That's the nice thing about the student version is that, like when my research group buys MATLAB, we pay like $400 per toolbox. You got like 10 toolboxes plus MATLAB for $99. The only limitation of the installation you have is it won't solve really huge problems. Like if you try to solve a thousand by thousand matrix problem, it may, it may not work for that. But for all the problems you want to solve, it's really quite a bargain, I think, actually. Um, the only problem is we should probably tell you you need to buy it before you enroll. Right? It's just kind of like I hit you with it. I'm the first one that hits you with this, right? Who hits you first? Well, that's nice of him. Um, okay, I had a joke loaded up, but I'm going to just avoid that one. Okay, so um, anytime I say that, my wife says I'm sure that was the right choice. All right, so um, this is how it's used. The syntax is exactly the same. So you have to write a function, okay, that solves the equation, that evaluates the right-hand side of the equation. Now you understand it's going to be a vector of functional values, because you might have a system that looks like this just for simplicity. You have a function f1, it depends on x1 and x2. And then you have a function f2 that also depends on this, okay? So you're going to have to write a function that evaluates both f1 and f2. MATLAB's going to give you x1 and x2 in a vector called x, and then you're going to return f1 and f2 in a vector called f, okay? So you have to write that function, which I called fun here. And you have to guess the answer. Guess what? Now you have to guess x1 and x2. <laughs> right? So if you had a problem that was 100 unknowns, you'd have to guess all 100 of them. It gets challenging, right? Because if, if, like in this case, you're saying this is not, so if it doesn't work, you're l looking over a one-dimensional space, you'll just start making new guesses, right? You can imagine if you're over some 10-dimensional hypercube, you'd just be like perplexed on where to guess, I would, I would think, unless you're a lot smarter than I am, okay? Um, so right, <laughs> same syntax, but x is a vector of variables that MATLAB will give you. And then your function fun here has to evaluate a fun uh, vector function and has to return it as a vector called f, OK? <coughs> Sorry. So there's different um, options you can choose to solve this. I don't actually know what the default option is. So many things in MATLAB, you can change what MATLAB does, but it usually has a default. If you don't specify anything, it does a certain default. And I don't know what the default is for this method. I don't even know what the trust region dogleg is, but I'm fascinated by the name, obviously. Um, Gauss-Newton we learned about, um, which is a variant of the Newton method. And the levenberg marquardt is also a well-known method. So it's not you know, critical you know the exact methods, but they're going to be iterative methods as reflected by the fact you have to guess the answer. And they're also going to have the same problems you've seen before. They might diverge. There might be multiple answers, all the things that we learned, OK? So I don't know. <coughs> okay, this is, the, this is the toy example we did in class. You might recall it's two functions and two unknowns. So the first function is shown there, involves x1 squared plus x2 squared minus 2, and you can see the second function. And so the idea is to find x1 and x2 that solve those two equations. You can see by inspection and based on our previous work, 1 and 1 do the job, right? And I actually think 1 and 1 are the only solutions as well, all right? So, so I guess I wrote something here. Let's check it out. If 
Doesn't get much easier than this, okay? So MATLAB's gonna give you a vector of values called x, okay? And then the job of this function here is to give it back a two-dimensional vector of the functional val the f f values of the function f1 and f2, okay? So this, this is just the two equations. I don't know what more to say, right? This one is x1 squared plus x2 squared minus 2. That's the first function. And the second function is x1 times x2 minus 1. Okay? That's all you have to do. Yeah? Well, don't you ever specify that they're equal to 0 because x2 plus? Yeah. Right. That's why you always have to make sure that, like when I did the one problem with the uh, Redlich-Kwong equation, it wasn't actually written initially, right? This is how you would normally write the equation. But that's not suitable for solving it because it's not a function equals zero. So that's why I rewrote the function like this. So it assumes whatever function you give it equals zero. So if you were to give it this thing over here, not p, you would get some you'd get some spurious answer. It wouldn't make any sense, okay? Because it wouldn't know there's a p there. Yeah. All right. All right. So we got this guy here. Sounds good. And um, so, for example, we can guess this. Why did I guess that? I don't know. It felt like it. You can see I have all kinds of x's. I'm famous for having equations that define x. So let's go back and copy this thing. So the challenge now is you have to guess two values, which I've managed to do. And so let's, you run this now, so right? Forget that thing in the middle. <laughs> to avoid any confusion, let me just do it the way it should have been done. Okay, like that. So I guess two values. I guess both x1 and x2 to be 10, right? I specified that as a vector, as you can see, in the brackets. And then I issued this command. So I had f solve, in quote, f solve example in quotes. That's the function I wrote, the m file. My guess is at the end there. And then I want to get back a value of x. So you get, this, you get this message here. MATLAB likes to give messages. So you see this thing that says equation solved. That sounds promising, right? It says, f solve completed because the vector of function values is near zero as measured by the default value of the function tolerance. The problem appears regular as measured by the gradient. <laughs> You're like, uh, I just like equation solved. <laughs> <You know? laughs> what this says is, um, you know, you, you remember these tolerances we talked about? Like you're solving these equations, but numerically you're, you know, you're not making this exactly zero. You might be making this like 10 to the minus sixth or something like this. So what MATLAB is telling you is that the tolerance that's specified, which is a default value, you'd have to look at what it is. I've met your tolerances. I've solved the equation as accurately as you've told me to. I'm stopping. That's what that message says. Okay? And you get back one and one, so that's gratifying. So that seems good. But I'm sure we could break this if we want to. Let's just show some really poor judgment. Um, ho holy crap, it's another solution, right? <laughs> Sorry, that's not, that's not appropriate language. Holy smokes. Um, it's another solution, children. And this solution is minus 1 and 1. And you can see that's obviously going to work, right? Because the equation is x1 squared, x2 squared minus 2. And the other one's x1 times x2. So both those things will solve it, OK? So for this problem, you know, it's so simple, you can, you, you pro I should, probably should have seen that ahead of time. But you can see, depending on the guess, you get a different answer. And many problems that you solve, you don't know how many solutions there are, and you don't know what guesses will lead to them. And that's the, exa that's the example you're about to do, OK? So maybe there are no guesses that will That seems like a Huh. So that's basically minus 1 and 1. I mean, that's minus 1 and minus 1, but maybe we should make our tolerances a little bit z tighter so it's actually minus 1 and 1. But it's basically the same solution. Okay. Um, so now you guys are going to do this exercise. So the challenge of teaching this class has proven to be, especially as we get later in the semester, is that you guys haven't had kinetics and reaction engineering, and that's where all my examples used to be drawn from, because they're very accessible. So what I'm going to do is give you a set of equations to solve, and I don't expect you to understand where the equations came from. But it's hard to just give you a set of equations with no explanation at all. So I feel motivated like to tell you where they came from, but it's part of the class is not for you to understand where they came from, but it's just like, you know, just completeness of presentation, let's say, okay? <coughs> so I'm hoping 
even though you don't know the details, I'm hoping you've heard of something called a chemical reactor, right? These are used very frequently in chemical engineering. What we do, this is called a continuous reactor. You flow in ingredients that you want to react. In this case, we only have one reactant called A. You mix this tank up so that you assume it's well mixed. And then in this tank, a reaction takes place and you produce some product B. Usually coming out of the tank will be a mixture of A and B because you don't get 100% yield. You don't convert all the A to B, okay? Um, and the reactor <coughs> typically will generate energy because it's an exothermic reaction, so you have to have some way of cooling the reactor. So that's where that cooling coil, it removes heat so that you can have some control over the temperature. Because the nature of, let me see if you guys have ever learned this. Because I haven't taught sophomores, I, I have to admit, I don't know what they know. But reaction rate, You've, you ever, have you ever seen this? Reaction rate, how it depends on temperature. You've seen this? Kind of temperature dependence of a reaction rate? Okay. So the idea here is that <coughs> this is the reaction rate, and if you look at this dependence on temperature, the reaction rate increases with temperature. So you, if you don't remove heat, you generate more heat. If you generate more heat, you get more reaction. If you generate more reaction, you generate more heat. So it's what we call positive feedback. And so if you were to lose um, the ability to control the temperature of this reactor, um, you know, one possibility is you run out of reactant, but since you're continuously supplying the reactant, usually the reactor would explode, right? That's not so good. So that's why, and you'll learn all this when you take reaction engineering. We'll talk a lot about this in control when you're seniors. You will see me again. So if you don't like me, don't tell me yet. Just wait until you're seniors. Okay. So I'm just telling you, these are the equations of interest for this system, okay? You've got two equations. They come from, so you guys have taken mass and energy balances. I know that, right? So this comes from performing mass and energy balances on this um, reactor. Uh, so I'll just tell you what each term is. But again, the details of the model is not our main focus. So you should have learned this term. Accumulation equals in minus out plus generation, right? And so that's a conservation equation. You can write that equation for anything that's conserved. You know, what are things that are conserved? For, to us, three things are conserved, mass, energy, momentum, right? And You've already learned about mass and energy balances. You'll learn about momentum conservation later. But, so this comes from a component balance, okay? So we've got, if you do an overall mass balance on this system, you would find the amount of material entering is the same as the amount of material leaving. I just don't bother writing that. So this is a component balance on one of the components. You don't need a component balance on both components. Did you ever learn that? Maybe not, because you haven't really done reaction engineering. Okay. So we're writing these at steady state. That means there's no accumulation. This is the amount of A coming in, because you're feeding it in at this concentration, that rate. That's the amount of A leaving, because it leaves at the same rate, but a reduced concentration that we're trying to find. We don't know that value, CA bar. We're trying to find it. I put bars over it, because everything's at steady state. Don't worry about that. So that's in minus out, and A is being consumed. So generation is minus, right? Consum it's consumption, not generation. And so this thing here is the reaction rate I just wrote on the board. That reaction rate is always written per unit volume. So that's why you multiply by the volume of the reactor. And then you multiply that times the concentration of A. Because this is, this is the reaction rate constant, but the actual reaction rate is K times the concentration of the reactor.